Hello, dear ones, Father Peter John coming to you from All Saints Orthodox Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Christ is in our midst. Blessed feast to you. We are celebrating the week of the Holy Spirit. On Sunday, we celebrated Great and Holy Pentecost to the descent of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles of Christ and the form of fiery tongues. Uh, at that event, St. Peter preached a fiery homily, his Pentecostal homily, and uh, 3,000 people were baptized afterwards. It was some homily. Um, and uh, the following day, Monday, was called Holy Spirit Monday, the day that we celebrate uh, the third person of the Holy Trinity, that being the Holy Spirit. Um, and then this whole week is called the Week of the Holy Spirit. And so um, each day we are celebrating uh, Pentecost in a, uh, with, with different hymns and things. Now, um, it's also important to note that every Sunday between now and the end of the liturgical year is going to re be referred to as the such and such Sunday after Pentecost. For example, uh, next Sunday will be the first Sunday after Pentecost, the following Sunday will be the second Sunday after Pentecost, etc. And it goes on and on. It goes on and on because the church is uh, very Pentecostal, and I don't mean in the modern sense of the term. I mean Pentecostal in the sense that the Orthodox Church has always, from the beginning, called down the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in the divine services. We begin every service with an invocation of the Holy Spirit, O Heavenly King, O Comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fill us all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life. Come and abide in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O Good One. We call down the power of the Holy Spirit upon the uh, bread and the wine to make it the body and blood of Christ. At the liturgy, we um, celebrate the fact that the Holy Spirit works in the church and the body of Christ, uh, that the Holy Spirit works through the oil of anointing, for example, in holy unction for the healing of soul and body, etc. So the church uh, now and always has embraced the work and the life and the presence, the indwelling, the movement of the Holy Spirit among the people. Now, this uh, is evident in, in, in many ways, but I will show you um, right behind me. You see, I've got my prop. Uh, that is the uh, dome. It's a gold, sparkly dome. It catches, the sun, it catches the sun beautifully, and it shines, and it's bright, and it's beautiful. But the question is, what is that there for? You know, is it just to identify that, well, I see there's that onion-shaped dome. Those people really must like onions. No. It is a, a, it is a sign, it's an icon, a three-dimensional icon that is on the, on the top of uh, mainly Russian Orthodox churches. We are an Antiochian Orthodox church, but we have one of these domes as well because of the symbolism. A three-dimensional icon of the tongue of fire. So you see, we still profess to be filled as the people of God with the Holy Spirit. And we are to walk in the Spirit, to walk by faith and not by sight. We are to learn to rely upon the Holy Spirit to guide us. We always pray for that. Um, we are to, uh, as St. Seraphim Serov says, to acquire the Holy Spirit. And he assures us that if we do this, that we acquire the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of peace, that thousands around us will be saved. What an awesome word that is. Glory to God for that. You can't tell the Holy Spirit what to do. That's not how it works. God will do what he will do. Uh, we see that in Acts chapter 10, a beautiful example of that, when uh, St. Peter is called by Cornelius to Caesarea to preach to Cornelius and his family and close friends, to preach the gospel to them. And as uh, St. Peter is preaching to them the word of God, they have what we call the Gentile Pentecost. Before they're even baptized, the Holy Spirit descends upon them and they begin to speak in tongues and glorify God. Um, so, you know, the Holy Spirit works outside the box sometimes. Uh, but what we do know is that um, our job is to be willing vessels, uh, willing temples of the Holy Spirit. That's what we're called, temples of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul says, do you not know that your bodies are, are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So, uh, brothers and sisters, I encourage you in this Pentecost week, in this week of the Holy Spirit, to recommit yourself to be a willing vessel, uh, to be a willing temple of the Spirit of God, and to live a life that is worthy of that calling. God help us all. Christ is in our midst. He is and ever shall be.